What the fuck is up? Welcome back. My name is Noah Hills. You can find me on Twitter at Noah More Parties. You can find me on TikTok at Noah More Parties. And you can find my written work and my running back rankings for Devi, Dynasty, Rookie Drafts, all that stuff at NoahMoreParties.com. In today's video, uh, I've seen the idea thrown around a little bit, more than a little bit, I think, uh, but that this 2023 running back class is, number one, disappointing. Uh, we've been looking forward to this class since Bijan Robinson, Jameer Gibbs, Tank Bigsby, Zach Evans, since these guys were freshmen in 2020. It's been, you know, three years. We know those guys were studs as freshmen. We saw 2023. We're like, okay, that is the running back class. We need to watch out for it. It's going to be elite. And now it's here and everybody's like, eh, and Blake Corum went back to school and Zach Evans doesn't, didn't run for a thousand yards. Like every, whining about how this running back class isn't good. And even throwing out the idea that the 2024 running back class is better. I know we say this every year. Sometimes the next class is better. Uh, but I wanted to explore that idea because I think it has applicable importance to your dynasty teams. You know, if the 103 or the RB3 in this running back class, the one that's supposed to be awesome, isn't quite as good as the RB2, 3, 4 in the next class, that's important to know for how you want to spend your rookie pick. So I want to explore this idea that the 2024 rookie running back class is better than 2023. Let's do it. <laughs> This idea of the the strength of the 2024 rookie running back class kind of hinges on two guys, I think, mostly at the top. The first one is the guy who's been ranked as the RB1 in that class, mostly by consensus, since he was a freshman at Ohio State, and that's Travion Henderson. He is 5'10 and 214 pounds. He's going to be a true junior this year. Uh, he's fast. He's explosive. He's very good in the open field. He gets Reggie Bush comps, which if that tells you anything, Reggie Bush back at, you know, USC was a, a folk hero. He was an icon to everyone who was in sixth grade at the time. But he was a, a super elusive space back, maybe not the best pure runner, but athletic traits that made him effective in that area, but especially good out in space. He was, you know, they were talking about, you know, Mel Kuyper on draft night talking about how he can line up as a wide receiver um, in the slot and, and beat cornerbacks and things like that. That's the guy that Travion Henderson is getting comped to. And I think that is almost could not be further from the truth. Henderson caught 27 passes in 2021 as a freshman. That's very good. I think that was a little bit of Mickey Mouse production, though. Uh, like I mentioned before, Reggie Bush lined up at wide receiver, was able to run routes downfield, beat man coverage to a certain degree. All of Travion Henderson's targets as a freshman came while he was lined up at running back. None of them from the slot, none of them at wide receiver, None of them at H-back or tight at whatever. All of them came from him lining up as a running back. 75% of his total routes run as a freshman in 2021 were what I would classify as like basic check down type routes. So screens, flats, swing passes, plays where he just like blocks, uh, like a check and release route is what Sports Info Solutions or data provider calls it, where they just, you know, kind of chip the edge and then flare out for a, a check down or, or a curl where you just run past the line of scrimmage, turn around and wait for a pass. 75% of his routes run in 2021 were of that variety. That's in the 75th percentile in a bad way. 75, he, he was running more basic routes than 75% of running backs in all of college football. His route diversity, which I'm, I'm tr going to try to explain this effectively. Okay, let's look at Skittles, a bag of Skittles. You pour it out, you expect to have roughly the same amount of each color. That would be a very diverse bag of Skittles. But if you had a different bag of Skittles where you had two orange ones, three blue ones, one green one, and 18 red ones, not at all a diverse bag of Skittles. You've got some of these other colors over here, but predominantly red. That was Travion Henderson's route tree uh, repertoire as a route runner as a freshman. Like I said, tons of basic routes, lots of screens, lots of swing passes, Almost none of anything else. Uh, his total route diversity was in the 24th percentile that year compared to running backs in all of college football. So scrubs who aren't going to make it to the NFL, all those guys, 76% of them had more diverse route trees than Travion Henderson was running as a freshman. But his per route target rate adjusted for the kinds of routes he was running, 64.6%, 100% 
would be he's being targeted as often as running backs across the country are on a per route basis. So he's being targeted 35% less often on his routes than average dudes in college football, where that's a 15th percentile number. He can catch the ball. 93% catch rate is very good. 11.7 yards after the catch per reception is pretty good. 84th percentile. So he can catch the ball cleanly and he can make things happen with the ball in his hands. But that's different than being comparable to Reggie Bush as a receiver who, like I said, Mel Kuyper was saying this dude could line up in the slot and run routes as a wide receiver coming out of college. That is absolutely not Travion Henderson, at least at this point in his development. But okay, that was only when he was a freshman. What happened when he was a sophomore? He played eight games, cut only four passes. So, you know, not very Reggie Bush-like there either. And he hasn't even been that good as a runner. 0.92 yards per carry greater than what his teammates averaged in 2021. That's good. 66th percentile, almost averaging a full yard per carry more than his teammates, but succeeding on his carries given down in distance, given the box counts that he's seeing relative to his teammates, he was succeeding on almost 7% fewer of his runs than those guys were. That's a number in the fifth percentile. That's very bad relative to how other future NFL running backs perform against their teammates in college. Fifth percentile. And then last season, he averaged 0.48 yards per carry fewer than the other guys at Ohio State. That's a 14th percentile number. And again, he succeeded on 2% fewer of his carries than the other guys at Ohio State did. That's a 22nd percentile number. Travion Henderson is like Reggie Bush. If Reggie Bush was a little bit bigger, didn't do much in the passing game beyond catch like swing passes and screens. And if Reggie Bush was like less efficient than Lendale White was when they both played at USC, which was not the case. So Reggie Bush comps don't make much sense. He's much more like Miles Sanders, maybe. But even Miles Sanders had better numbers in a lot of these areas than Travion Henderson had in college. He's one of the main guys that the strength of the 2024 class hinges on. He's RB1 or RB2 for a lot of people. The other guy who's RB1 or RB2 is Raheem Rocket Sanders, who plays at Arkansas. He's six foot two, 227. That's like David Johnson, Le'Veon Bell type size. And he played wide receiver in high school. He came... I believe he was recruited as an athlete, um, is now playing running back, but this, he, he's legit. In his two years at Arkansas, 39 receptions, 75th percentile route diversity in both of those seasons. So he's running a wide array of routes. He averaged two yards per carry more than the other guys at Arkansas did in 2022. Uh, his box adjusted efficiency rating, which is another team relative efficiency metric, but unlike yards per carry, it looks at, it adjusts things for the kind of box counts that you're seeing. So if you're running exclusively into very heavy defensive fronts and other guys on your team are playing on like third down, running the ball against light fronts. It adjusts things for that. But in that metric, Raheem Sanders' mark is 147%, which means the average carry for Raheem Sanders was worth worth 47% more yardage than the average carry for all other running backs collectively at Arkansas averaged on their carries. So very impressive. That's an 89th percentile number. He succeeded on 4.5% more of his attempts than other backs at Arkansas. That's in the 61st percentile. And he was really good in the open field, 75th percentile at turning 10-yard runs into longer runs of 20 yards or more. And he broke a lot of tackles, 0.29 missed tackles force per attempt per PFF, 87th percentile. He's big, he's fast, he's a quality receiver. He's been more efficient on the ground than his teammates have been. He's been more consistent on the ground than his teammates have been. He's a good tackle breaker. He's good in the open field. Raheem Sanders is a blue chip, all-purpose, full skill set running back prospect in the same mold as guys like Le'Veon Bell, Brees Hall, same type of... He's he's in the same archetype that Bijan Robinson's in. I'm not saying he's as good as Bijan or as good as Brees Hall. I'm I'm not saying any of that. I'm not necessarily not saying that. But that's not what I'm saying. This isn't a a comment about the quality of Raheem Sanders. It's about the type of prospect that he is. And he checks all those boxes in the same way that David Johnson, Le'Veon Bell, uh, you know, Bijan. He's that kind of prospect is what I'm saying. He would probably be RB2 in the 2023 running back class. So there we go. We got Raheem Sanders at the top. We got Travion Henderson, who a lot of other people have at the top. One thing I've noticed about the 2023 class is that everybody likes Bijan. Most people like Gibbs. Uh, and then like, there's like Charbonnet, Bigsby, A-Chain, but really there's like 12 to 15 guys that I've seen people ranking in their top fives. Like this is 
a very deep running back class of players that people like, and I don't think that the 2024 class is necessarily like that. There's some good players. I'm going to go over them, you know, quickly here. One of them is Blake Corum, who was part of the 2023 running back class, tore his ACL at the end of the season after the end of a great season at Michigan. I believe he won whatever the award is for the best running back in the country. Anyway, I believe he won that. If he didn't, he was in contention. Anyway, so he tore his ACL, is going back to school, but he's like a Maurice Jones Drew type guy. He's like 5'8", 210. He's efficient on the ground. He's incredibly explosive, great lateral quickness, good mix of power and, and elusiveness as a runner, decent pass catcher. He's a solid player. Uh, Donovan Edwards is his teammate at Michigan who's like six foot, six one, two oh five or something. He's like a Tony Pollard type guy, versatile downfield receiver, explosive, but like maybe not quite as refined as a runner. Uh, there's Braylon Allen at Wisconsin, who's six foot two, 235 pounds. He's still only like 19 years old. He's a runway runner. He's got to get up to speed, but once he's up to speed, he's tough to tackle. And some of his receiving numbers were kind of nice this last year. Maybe he's got some untapped AJ Dillon type upside in the receiving game. Then we got guys like Will Shipley, who I don't really have a good grasp on him stylistically yet, but he's been efficient in both of his years, a uh, solid receiver in both of his years. He's 5'11", 205. He could probably get up to like 210 by the time the combine rolls around. He's supposed to be a freak athlete. You know, he's a solid player. Devin Neal at Kansas, great pure runner, 150% box adjusted efficiency rating, 6% relative success rate. Not much of a receiver, but 5'11", 210 uh, per campus to Canton.com's uh, player athleticism comparison tool. He's got 99th percentile burst. He's also playing baseball for Kansas. I don't know how good of a prospect he is there. So I don't know. That could be something to keep an eye out for. But then we also got Marshawn Lloyd, who is a returning senior, just like Blake Corum, but 5'9", 212, uh, 164% box adjusted efficiency rating, just ridiculous. 12% relative success rate, just ridiculous. 89th percentile route diversity, 68th percentile per route target rate, good in the passing game, efficient in the running game, rocked up body type, and now at USC with Lincoln Riley and Caleb Williams. Could be wheels up for Marshawn Lloyd. There's some interesting guys in this in the next year's class. Those are the main contenders, and if things break right, I think that could be another good running back class. It's not going to be quite as strong at the top as 2023. It's not going to be quite as deep as 2023, but it has a good mix of both. But I think a key point here. The, the key points are Travion Henderson is overrated, vastly overrated. The second point is that the 2024 class is currently at an advantage in the way that we're perceiving them because 2023 is here and has gone, th all of the players in the 2023 class have gone through the ups and downs of a college career. Blake Corum tore his ACL, would have been part of the 2023 class. He got hurt and is now in the 2024 class. Uh, Zach Evans had an up and down career with injuries and you know, seeding time to other quality running backs. Tank Bigsby had a couple down years efficiency-wise. Uh, Sean Tucker just had a down year efficiency-wise. There's all these different things that transpired just over the course of these guys playing out their careers that caused what looked like a flawless running back class a couple years ago, now is here and it's good but disappointing relative to a lot of people's expectations. The same shit is going to happen to every running back class that comes after this. 2024 is not immune to Will Shipley tearing an ACL or Donovan Edwards uh, being really bad for some reason or Travion Henderson losing his job completely to Mayan Williams and going back to school, you know, transferring. Random shit like that happens every year and we just don't see that for 2024 because the 2023 season has hasn't happened yet. So it has that advantage. I still don't think, think it's that strong at the top or with depth. Player for player 2023 is just better. More stocked with NFL contributors, higher end talent at the top. It's not as good as we expected back when these guys were freshmen, but still very strong. 2024 still has to withstand those sorts of things as well. Overall, uh, fade Travion Henderson and fade the people who are telling you that 2023 is a disappointment and 2024 is better. Hold on to your rookie picks. Don't sell them for 2024s. Uh, and thank me later. It might take you three or four years to realize that this was the most on-point video you've ever watched on any topic. But I expect that in that time, you'll come back to the comment section and let me know how I did. But other than that, have a, have a great day. I'll see you on uh, Wednesday. Yeah, peace.